Thor gets it. <laughs> right? <laughs> His grandmother used to hate riding on buses when it got dark because they turned the fluorescent lights on and I can hear the, the high pitch. Yeah. We understand. We do. We understand all sorts of things. And it's Tuesday. Yay! Tuesday. Oh. With people slowly joining us, welcome. A few more friends pop in here. What has Leah? Oh, yes. we got we got new stuff in boxes today. <laughs> new stuff in boxes. New stuff in boxes today. I'm I'm excited to share. There's six people on Facebook. I don't see anybody on YouTube. We're live in both places. So hello Facebook. Hello YouTube. Barb's got a cool demo for you. A little bit of a we work. have to suffer through some announcements with me first. <laughs> that's that's how we're gonna roll. I've got many things to share. I have a list. I carried it around yesterday. I have it with me again today. <laughs> yesterday I didn't talk about it in order. It was very scattered and random. So we went through for store tour, which is it's really fun. That's lots of fun. Yeah, it's lots of fun. I like yeah. doing store tours, and we do them on Mondays when nobody's here. Because otherwise, otherwise I run the risk of getting customers in there that don't want to have their faces on camera. Hello, Teresa. Hello, Elaine. Okay. So I'm going to get going on my announcements here. I see, ah, see a few people. Oh, if I close that, then I'll be able to see more things. There we go. So, uh, first up, uh, end of this week, we have our Kimberbell Welcome Home event. There's still a couple spaces available. Um, we had some people looking for that event from crazy far away places. So they're going to watch the event and their kit will arrive in the mail about a week later. <laughs> um, because if you order a kit, we'll put it in the mail, but it won't be there for Thursday and Friday. Uh, but there is still space in that. Um, it uses the My Design Center features and the Brother Luminaire. Potentially, if you have a Brother Stellaire or a Dream Machine, you'll be able to do most of the project the same way. It's pretty cool. So there's still space in that. Um, coming up next week, on Monday, we have OSD Stitch Party. So we're doing uh, quilt piecing in the hoop, making a little pillow. And it's it's some cool embroidery, because if you struggle to get really accurate points when you're doing things like triangles or flying geese, you can make them in your embroidery machine. It's cool. Uh, coming up Wednesday next week is the super big deal. Um, we have a free embroidery event from OSD. So it's a online event virtual you can join us from anywhere and there is smoking deals on things like stabilizer bundles uh there are some smoking deals on embroidery designs there might be a bit of a sale on thread but it's only valid for 24 hours so uh the link will be available early next week if you call the store and register for the free event uh they'll confirm your email address and you'll get an email reminder the day before um if you don't want to do that because it feels like too much work to give us a call. Just watch all our social media um, early next week. We'll have that link posted absolutely everywhere that I can. Um, there's a Facebook event in there. Um, I don't know where to put a link on YouTube. Haven't figured that part out yet. Um, I'll talk to my guy. <laughs> so that's coming up uh, on the 14th. End of next week, we have our Bernina Creative Studio Technique and Embroidery classes. Um, the technique is using the elasticator on a serger. So if you own a serger, it doesn't matter what brand, there is probably a way to sew elastic on with your serger. Um, also, if you have a cover stitch, we'll be talking about both. And I think I'm only gonna pull three different machines into that class. We'll talk combo machine, uh, cover stitch and serger on their own. So we'll, we'll talk about all those things. Um, the embroidery class is making a little in the hoop scissor holder. It's adorable, Anne's teaching that one. Uh, the following week, our next run of Peppermint's World Dress class starts, and our t-shirt class starts. And if you buy a serger between now and then, um, we'll get you signed up for those classes for free. One of those classes for free. You still have to get the supplies, but the class fee will be waived. Uh, Aunt Annie's. What day is that happening? The third Thursday, so yes, it could be next week. Today is the 6, 7, 8... 
So that would be the second. So yes, Aunt Annie should be next week. I'll have to double check the calendar. Because I have it in there. Yeah, because the first, July 1st was a, was a Thursday. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. That screws me up. Yeah. I know. It's confusing. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes, Aunt Annie's is next week. And yes, I know you're looking forward to the instruction because this week's, this month's block is... Is this month's block trickier than all Challenging. Oh. Yes. Okay, so They're if you're... They're never hard. They're just challenging. And they're new. Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, so Aunt Annie's is our mystery novel and quilt program that Barb's been doing all year. Uh, but you can still sign up for that. It's all been recorded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and monthly Zoom classes to make the block every month. So this month's block is definitely not as easy as the first couple. They've been going kind of up and down. But I have to I have to say that the folks in the class that are joining us live, some of them are getting their blocks done. And they're doing so well. Yay, that's the fun. Hard ones. That's fun. That's super fun. Um, I called in final registration numbers for our Kimberbell Day at the Fair event. I have one spot left. One. Who know? So that's it. That's all. I can't get anybody else in there. Because... Uh, kits are in the mail and there is no more of them coming that's what i know um so if you want to register for that that's july 28th uh end of the month we have our next run of kimberbell a la carte classes starting so that's little tiny embroidery projects every month running last fridays of the month uh home sweet haunted home is a kimberbell event coming up in august i'll need to finalize numbers for that and uh, end of next week probably Sometime about a month before. So yes, lots of, lots of stuff going on. Um, but I have some new stuff in my hand. Uh, our order of OSD for our event next week has shipped. We have most of it here. Um, we do, if we sell more than we have here in the store, we'll order more. But some of the new OSD products shipped. <laughs> and, and the first little thing here is the freestanding lighted village so if you like the idea of that freestanding lace village that osd has this is the scissor tail version they're much simpler houses um very lots of fabric a little bit of stitching so if you're just new to embroidery and terrified of making an entire village out of out of thread um this would be a good place to start but it's almost stampede week here in calgary and and if you're into that but you're not going because well the world's not totally back to normal yet <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to stampede. Personal decision. Do what's right for you. Uh, we do have a freestanding lace cowboy boot. So this is free. It's not freestanding lace. It's freestanding applique. Um, these things, I saw them in the dealer showcase. They stand eight and a half inches tall. So they fit little little babies. Yeah, or they just set, stand on your mantel place to decorate for, for stampede week. <laughs> I think they're cute. Um, and as always, not as always, as what's happening right now in the summer, um, if you're shopping in our online store, hint, hint, uh, it counts if you attend our OASD virtual event next week. Um, if you're shopping in our online store and you spend $50 before tax and shipping, you'll get entered in a draw to win a sewing machine at the end of the summer, as well as weekly draws. So that's... They're, they're pretty good weekly draws. I've yeah, seen some. Uh, I've been yeah. peeking... <laughs> I peeked in about half the bags that I've given away. The, the week my kids were here on video with me, we didn't peek. Oh. Because they decided that was not appropriate. <laughs> so anyway, that's the new stuff I have in my hands. Um, look forward to seeing you guys in classes soon. Um, because some days are too hot to go outside and do things. So you should come and or take a class. Or pouring rain. Or it's pouring rain. Well, it's Calgary. It's Canada. Yeah. Weather in the summer is not predictable. So <laughs> do whatever's right for you. Um, but I'm going to hand it off to Barb because she has a mountain of stuff back here today. Yeah. Cool things. Yeah, there's some really funky things. <laughs> so have fun with Barb. I have a question before you go, Miss Leah. Yeah. Since we're going to be talking about placemats mm -hmm. today, I'm pretty sure, at least it makes sense to me, that one could actually quilt placemat in the hoop on an embroidery machine. Could one not? Yeah. See? Yeah, definitely you could quilt, <laughs> quilt a placemat in your embroidery hoop. Yeah. There's I'm not demoing that one. Oh, you're not going to demo no. that today for me? Uh, yeah, today. you don't have an embroidery machine over no, here today. No, that, that's that, true. That's okay. So. Oh, not raining in Cochrane yet. It's coming. It's coming. 
Oh well. Oh well. <laughs> so that's usually my cue when 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 the Facebook audience says it's raining where they are. That's my cue to 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 uh, run away and and ride home yeah, before ride I get home. soaking wet. <laughs> <laughs> Leith combines her her daily exercise and her daily shower. Yeah, yeah, not my favorite, but <laughs> I'd rather ride when it's dry. <laughs> Much better that way. So have fun on making placemats with Barbie. Okay, thanks, Leah. All right, let's gather up my stuff. Step in front here. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Tuesday. We're not calling it Technique Tuesdays anymore because hey, we're doing a lot of stuff other than just different techniques so yes we're going to talk placemats because um well because i know it's old school i know it's one of those like uh people don't care but i don't like eating off of a, a bare table i don't like that sound on the tabletop of the plates and the you know things like that so so i always use place mats or tablecloths or something at home and you build up a repertoire of place mats and i thought it would be kind of fun just to let people know how easy it is to make a place mat besides we've got some really really cute place mat fabric so so that's what i'm just going to show you for the first part of today and then we're going to do a little bit of sewing on one so we're going to start dawn has left me a basket of goodies a basket of goodies here and we're going to start these are just basic placemat patterns and some of them are pretty straightforward i think i'm going to switch cameras here uh let's see how well this is going to show up for you so these are just basic patterns and a lot of times you're going to get both a placemat and a table runner on your pattern. So it's a great way to use up some of those smaller pieces of fabric you have. It's a great way to try out a new technique. This one's kind of intriguing. I don't know how they make that, but that would be a fun one to practice with. We've got... This isn't exactly a placemat. I just go through the store, you know, before we get started here. I grab interesting things. This isn't a placemat, but it could easily function as a placemat or table topper. But it comes set out like this. And then when you're ready to travel with it, you just tuck those corners together and you have a nice little carrying bag. Quick, easy, summertime projects is what we're looking for this time of year. Here's a cute one, just says relax on it. We got a pair of flip flops. We've got a, a nice uh, beach chair. And we've actually got, Dawn has put out our little sample of that one as well. Cute little placemat, whether you use it, make a set of them and use them at all the places on your table or you just want to do one and have it as a table center. I thought these guys were kind of fun. Pop that guy. So if you have a larger family, wouldn't it be fun to do the whole set and everybody could have their own placemat and just keep things separate? We've got the patchabilities, of course. They do a lot of placemats and table runners i'm just going to run through some of these here that dawn has popped out for us but obviously we have to do this one <laughs> this one is called gnome is where you park it so summertime camping and that pattern makes either a bench pillow or a table runner so that would be kind of fun to do a table runner if you have a small table and just run it across for two people. Or you could break that down and just do a portion of it as um, a placemat. That's so cute. So lots of choices when it comes to patterns for placemats. Um, then we have things like this. This is a kit that Don has created for us. Move that over. Hold it really close. 
And basically what that is, is just really interesting fabric that you quilt. Gee, we've got the batting is included in your kit, the backing, and it makes four placemats. So you can quilt it and then do your binding in that cute, cute red check fabric. So, so that is one of my favorite, favorite ways of creating a placemat is just find a piece of fabric that you love you don't you don't want to cut it up too small and make a quill but because you just want to look at it so cut yourself a placemat sized piece of the fabric and go to town with your quilting that way you get to enjoy it you get to enjoy it over and over again and uh, you you don't have to buy like miles of fabric and then have it sit on the shelf and you go it's so beautiful i don't want to cut it up so that is obviously the easiest way to do a placemat actually it's the second easiest way because there is one easier way and that is a pre-printed placemat panel so i've got a couple here this is one we're actually going to do a bit of quilting on this today. So this is our fresh picked blueberries, homegrown strawberries. If you look behind over on this side, Dawn's got that uh, fabric set out right here. And there's a whole, um, I'm not getting it in there. There's a whole line of fabric that goes with this guy. So if you want to put a border on your placemat, make it a bit bigger. Um, there's lots of coordinates. There's, I'm going to move this chair. I'm shorter than Leah. I don't need to sit on the chair. You can see stacked up here some other selections in a pre-printed placemat panel. So if you've got somebody who likes to farm, that would make a really, really cute set of placemats you've got the um, plaid border on one side here that you can incorporate into your placemat or you can use it separately whichever you prefer that's a really cute one of course a couple of examples let's pull this guy out if you like oh let's fold it over how about something with a nice wine theme? That one's upside down. Turn that guy over. There we go. There we are. So there's another lovely set of placemats, a little more formal, that would look great just quilted up. So lots of choices there. And of course, we can't forget because, hey, it's summertime, we don't want to spend all the time in front of the sewing machine, that Christmas is coming. And Christmas is a great time to explore just different, different um, ways of decorating our homes. So this, was, this is a new line. It's going really fast. So, so cute. These guys, I think, are going to make a little bit smaller placemat but you can certainly trim around it with one of the colors in there and you've got one two three four five six little blocks there to make six christmas placemats would make a lovely gift on that one so how do you quilt it? Lots of people don't want to spend a lot of time quilting things like this, but I find that a placemat is one of the easiest way to practice your free motion skills and to practice quilting on your home machine. If you've never done it, it's a great way to refine your skills, to learn how to take care of it. So I've got couple of these prepared. I've got them layered with a basic backing fabric. I'm just using muslin this time. 
and I like to use a polyester batting in place mats. It tends to be a little more stable because these are going to be in the wash, in the dryer, in, back on the table, in the washing machine, back in the dryer. So I like the stability of a good polyester uh, batting for place mats. All right, let's get this machine set up. Come on, there it goes. So I wanted to show you first off that you don't have to work free motion. If free motion totally terrifies you, you, you could come and talk to me first. I can, I can unterrify you. But you can quilt something as small as a placemat without resorting to free motion. So I'm going to leave the machine initially just in straight stitching mode. And we'll get started on this little strawberry placemat. So let's switch over camera feeds. Let's see what we're going to see. Oh, that's lovely. It's showing you the top of the machine. All right, let's bring, bring that down there. <laughs> All right. How are we doing here? Well, a little bit more. A little bit more. There we go. All right. So that will work for us right there. So you can see on this placemat, we've got some pretty good straight lines. So the first thing I'm going to do is line up where I want to stitch. I'm going to use a slightly longer stitch because we don't want it to be too tight. And I can just carry on, follow that black line. And remember, this is a floor machine to turn the speed up <laughs> because otherwise we'll be here till we'll be here till the sun goes down. So it's perfectly easy to quilt your placemat without having to do free motion. Now you can go right slow. And I'm using about a quarter of an inch away from this black line as my guide. And you need to practice with your machine until you can just... So now I have a circle. Circles are always easier to do if you go slowly and don't use too long a stitch. So you'll notice that I don't have any basting pins or anything in this. The batting that I used is uh, fusible polyester. So it is fused to my backing fabric and it just keeps it in position. It's not a really tight, tight glue on there. You can move it, you can peel it off if you need to. So this is working really well at stabilizing this placemat. Smooth it out nicely. Placemats are fun to quilt because you can quilt as little or as much as you like. They're one place where the more you quilt it, the flatter it's going to lie on your table.
I'm just going to use the reverse so that I can tack those threads down because this is going to get a lot of use. I'm just going to overstitch the first part. I will use the thread cutter. So I can carry on and stitch around all of these images just using my standard presser foot on this. But I think what I'm going to do is switch to free motion because why not? Because we can. Because it tends to oops, there I know where it is. Um, tends to give you a little more flexibility when you're going around items. And if you're thinking of doing something like this for gifts. You want to be able to show off some of your skills as well. Just switching to the free motion foot on this. This is the brother, uh, what did I pull? The 3050. Very similar to the one I have at home, which is a, an older 2400. So you, I have my little darning foot or free motion foot. I'm going to set it in free motion right there and I'm ready to go. So. The nice thing with placemats, if you want to practice your free motion, it's not too big. It fits beautifully under most machines. So, we stop, we think, what am I going to outline? And I think I'm going to start right about here. And I'm going to outline these letters. And I'm just using the foot pedal the way I normally would. It's a great, great way to practice your free motion skills because you've got something to follow. It's like stitching a pattern. I go down to there. I want to go over this way. A lot of times when you're outlining things, it helps if you think in terms of quilting the background and not the item, not the image. And of course, the key is to keep a nice even speed with your hands, an even speed with your needle. Now I have white thread in here, but I'm going to carry right on out. There's a little white line there. Need to get back over here so I can just over stitch. Here we are. back to the beginning so that's the words on homegrown completely stitched around I'm liking how that's feeling now I can continue on and outline my strawberries and this is where you can make decisions as a quilter 
how densely you want things quilted. I could carry on and quilt very densely in the whole background, or I could just leave it and let it be. And I'm going to go loosely around this. Oh, that's a big space. Carry on. Down. Cross. Up. Now, I would be the sort of person who would want to change thread colors to do the strawberries. You may not be that particular. You may say, no, white thread is good enough. But I would be also the sort of person who would want a little bit of something in the background just to hold it flat. So this is where some of those basic quilting designs come into play. Just a few loops. Now I can go over here and outline flowers. gonna go across to the side and then maybe show you the difference. This is going to be another one of those projects I have to find time to finish so that we can hang them up in the store. And you're welcome to come in and test them. See how they feel. Threads here. Here we go. The faster my needle moves, the faster I have to move my hands to keep that even stitch length. And if it's not quite even, it's a placemat. What are we doing? I'm hearing some unusual sounds, so I have a feeling my bobbin thread could be running out. Which means it's a good time to stop. So, you can see the close-ups. I'm going to switch cameras here for a minute. Let's go to this one. There. Now, if I set that down there, maybe you can see. That has taken perhaps 20 minutes, and we have outlined this. We've outlined our letters, and I have quilted the fill in this top area. So you can see that each placemat might take you half hour, maybe a little bit more. And you can whip off a set of these in a couple of hours at home. And you can see the difference. You can see how this part is fairly stiff. 
with the stitching on it, like that. And this part, where there's less stitching, is still soft. The choice is up to you. I tend to like my placemats like this because we don't want to have to spend time ironing them after they're washed. And so if they're densely quilted, they're going to lay nice and flat. And that is a really, really cute placemat. Now you're going to put your small plates. We were talking about small plates earlier. We don't want too big a plate because it's summertime. Uh, on that, and it's going to look adorable, adorable on your table. So, that's what we have for you today. Fun to quilt, simple projects, easy projects, because it's fairly nice out. At least today has been fairly nice. And we don't want to spend all of our time indoors. We want to take the opportunity to enjoy our summertime while we have it. So, lots of options. You can pick up a pre-printed placemat panel and just work from that. You can actually piece or applique a placemat um, for a gift for yourself treat yourself there's so many cute designs and then you can always think ahead work towards Christmas and make those really really cute Christmas placemats so if you're old school like me and you like to have something on the table when you set that plate of hot dogs down on it uh, then always consider picking up these placemat panels. Hey, Leah, I think Leah's heading home. We're all done. We oh. we almost fin we almost finished our placemat. It's quilted already. Well, half halfway. But I only left like ten minutes to watch. Yeah, that. I know. But but quilting is so much fun. It just kind of it just kind of goes. It just kind of goes. Adorable. Yeah, I know. So I will have to finish the samples. We'll post them in the store so people can come in and have a look at them. And then they can go home and make their own placemats. Yeah. Ride safe. Take care. And yeah, and you'll be back tomorrow. Tomorrow we have uh, Wacky Wednesday with our Sandy. And I think she's got something to do about pets. Now, I'm not sure how pets and quilting meet up, but our Sandy's going to tell you about it. So stay tuned. Join us tomorrow at about the same time, about quarter after four as usual. And uh, we'll find out what Sandy has to tell us about pets and quilting fabric. So thanks for joining us today, everybody. It's been nice talking to you. Uh, consider picking up a placemat panel and as always stay calm stay kind stay safe we're almost through this uh, if Leah didn't mention it and is um, uh, going to be revisiting our in-store mask policy by I think the end of the week it's going to come out in the e-news uh, People I've run into today have absolutely no problem with still having to wear their masks. So we're erring on the side of caution. We want to get through this safe and sound. So till next time, take care, everyone, and have a great Tuesday.